I excuse the interruption, that was Grandpa shouting from the yard next door that he got gas for the snowblower. So if anybody needs to know, Grandpa has gas for the snowblowers. So now, we're driving Oscar around, and you have to remember when we bought it, it was sitting for anywhere from, or setting, depending on where you come from, uh, for anywhere from five to ten years. We're not certain how old the gas was, and it was about half a tank that was in it. Um, it smelled kind of funky um, when you were driving. So, but it, it drove okay. It, it didn't really have a problem. The throttle was a little, a little finicky. You know, you really couldn't mash it. It would, it would kind of stumble. Um, so we figured we got to work out that old gas. I put a, a bottle of Tecron in the tank, um, drove it around for a few days, and then we filled the tank up with uh, sea foam. Uh, with <laughs> filled the tank up with sea foam. We filled the tank with fresh gas. So we got about half a tank of old gas, half a tank of fresh gas, bottle of Tecron, and we got about uh, 10 ounces of sea foam in there and let it all kind of do its thing. And it actually started to run uh, a little better as we used it. So we used it, like I said, we cleaned the yard up, made a couple trips to the dump, and everything seemed to be going well, except I expected it to start getting better. The more we used it, things would get better, and things actually started to get a little worse. So one of the things that did happen was all of a sudden we were experiencing a very long crank time. And from, you know, it's starting pretty easily to it really needed to crank to start. And what I noticed after a couple of days of that long crank time was that it wouldn't start until my oil pressure gauge jumped up from cranking, which would indicate to me that my fuel pressure, uh, my fuel um, pump wasn't providing pressure or working or running until it got power through the oil pressure switch. So what I did was I turned that key on a quiet morning to see if I heard the two second prime. On these old TBI GM vehicles, when you turn the key on after it's been off for 10 seconds or more, you should get a two second prime. So if you listen quick, you should hear that fuel pump turn on for two seconds. And if you have a quiet pump, it, sometimes it's a little challenging to hear that. Well, I'm using two people is the best, one by the tank and one by the ignition. Turn the ignition on. So I wasn't getting my two second prime. So now, uh, do I have a problem? How's that prime circuit work? Well, the prime circuit uh, sends power to the fuel pump relay when you turn the ignition on, and that's the ECM is sending the power to the fuel pump relay for two seconds to prime it. And then when you start cranking, it sends power to the fuel pump relay as well so that it doesn't need to build oil pressure in order to get power. The oil pressure in order to get power is so that if you're driving and your relay goes, and you're making oil pressure, it keeps the circuit closed so that you're it's sending power to the fuel pump and you're driving and you don't break down on the side of the road somewhere is my understanding of how the circuit works. So it gets power two ways. So I was able to start and drive it, it just was a long crank time because I wasn't getting the prime feature and I wasn't getting fuel pressure while I was cranking until the oil pressure built. So if you're like me and you have a bunch of these 80s GM vehicles, you have the relay on the shelf because shit, we got five or six in the Camaro, we got one in the Blazer, we got one in this. So I did have an extra one that was known good, um, and I threw that in and got my prime back, and everything was good. But how do you troubleshoot it? Is what we want to do. And I didn't make a video because I was in a hurry to do it one day between jobs, and I'm going to go over exactly what I did with you today. So right here on the firewall, this is our original fuel pump relay. Uh, from the looks of it, it's probably the original one. Um, this is the one we popped in because it was a double bracket on the firewall and I just left the old one in place because like I said, I was doing it real fast. But pretty much what you need to do is it's got this clip in it, which most of them are gone already, but this is like a locking tab. So you pull the locking tab out. Um, Sometimes it comes out easy, sometimes you need a little screwdriver to work the locking tab out. And you get that locking tab out. Um, it's real nice that it was actually there because I've never seen an 80s vehicle with the locking tab still intact. All right, and you pull it out. So I, you pull it out from here and you can look right in here and you're gonna have one, two, three, four, five terminals. Right, so now with your five terminals, 
what you have is going to be the two smaller ones so these are, are obviously the two small ones that's your switch for the relay and then you got your three big ones now in your relay if I could pop it up let me see if I can pop it up and off easily but in your fuel pump relay here you only have um, four terminals so you have your switch which is going to be the two smaller ones and you have your power in and your power out which is the two bigger ones all right now how it works is you get constant battery voltage to one of the bigger ones and that constant battery voltage will go up into the relay get switched on and go back down the other one now I'm not sure which is which right now but I'm just giving you the example so if you were to take a test light hook to battery negative and touch one of these it's gonna light up the other one's not gonna light up because the relay isn't sending power to that one yet because the relay is unplugged now if the relay was plugged in and you turned it up, the relay on it would send the power from one big one to the other big one which is going down to the fuel pump your two small ones are your switches so one is going to be a constant ground the other one is going to get power from the ECM and when the ignition is on so when you first turn the ignition on the ECM is going to give power to one of the legs of the switches which is going to complete the circuit with the ground on the other leg of the switch it's going to close the relay and uh, that's going to send power from your battery input your battery power down to your pump and the ECM is going to time that for two seconds that's going to be your prime so it'll turn the pump on for two seconds and then it'll it'll stop the ECM will stop the power feed to the switch side of the relay and the prime ends then when you start cranking the ECM again will deliver power to the power side of the switch whichever small terminal the power side might be and close the switch again and when it closes the switch again it sends the battery constant down the big leg to the to the fuel pump to run the fuel pump while you're cranking and that's how it works now because I had a long crank time I knew the fuel pump worked what we didn't know was is it a relay that's bad and not closing and making that circuit complete or was the signal from the ECM bed which doesn't mean it's a bad ECM it could be a bad wire coming in it could be the ignition switch not sending the signal to the ECM that the ignition switch is on so the ECM doesn't know to give it power or or you got a bad wire somewhere so they could be a, you know a, a slew of different wiring problems that could cause this symptom but you could check it you could take a uh, like I said you could take a test light and you could probe for ground on one side of the switch and probe for power on the other side of the switch when the ignition switch is turned on and you only got two seconds to do it or while it's cranking so what I like to do is do it with another person they have the ignition off for at least 10 seconds to let the system reset itself and then I probe as soon as they turn the ignition on and see if I get my test light to light for the two second prime and then I know my wiring is good and it's my fuel pressure relay uh, fuel pump relay that is bad if you have one on the shelf because you got a bunch of 80s vehicles like I do then guess what it's easy to do unplug it pop it in turn the key on you hear the pump do its prime you know that it was the relay that went bad and then in our case it was the relay that went bad so I just simply to do a quick one day put it onto the second part of this bracket where there was no relay hooked up to and I popped it in like that I threw this in and that's all she wrote we were on the road it was cranking easy and there was no problem at all this one I could eventually just take off this lead coming off you could see it's taped into the harness this is factory this lead coming off this is a bypass lead or a test lead so if you took battery positive and applied it to this lead here it would run the fuel pump and that's uh, used for diagnostic purposes to see if your fuel pump is is functioning um, it takes the ECM it takes everything out of the mix just fuel pump it sends power directly to the fuel pump bypassing any relay or any fuse or anything like that so what I like to do when I'm testing something like that if I need to test something like that is I have a little jumper leg with a fuse in it and I'll give fused battery positive right here and that fuel pump should turn on regardless of whether you have the ignition on or anything like that it should turn on and that'll tell you whether you have a dead pump um, or not does not 
provide the pump with ground. So if your pump is losing its ground, even though you apply power here, that pump ain't gonna turn on because it doesn't have a ground to complete the circuit. All right, so that's my rundown on the fuel pump relay and, and how to check it. Um, I apologize I didn't do it when I put the pump in, uh, the relay in because I was just in a hurry. Um, but it's a pretty easy thing. Now, these relays, a GM AC Delco relay, um, still, it's made in China, but it is a GM AC Delco relay. They're like 13 bucks on Amazon. I'll link them in the description below. Aftermarket relay, I think you can get them around 10 or 12. I'll link that. Also, even if you get a standard, uh, which I've had great luck with, standard motor products, not the T series, which is their down series, their regular series. Um, 10 to 15 dollars. If you have a vehicle with, that uses these relays, or like us, we have three right now that use these relays. Having one on the shelf is great for diagnostics and it's great to get you going in a pinch to make the repair without having to do a run to a part store because eventually, especially in these old vehicles, the relays are going to start to fail. It's 30 something years and parts are going to wear out and fail. And you think of how many, how many millions of or billions of cycles that that relay has gone through over the past 30 some odd years that this truck's been being used. They wear out, they go bad. Um, it's just part of having an old car, an old truck. So that's what we got today from Axel's Garage. As always, give me your comments, your experiences down in the box below, and thanks for watching.